Okay. Right. Um, okay. Let's um, let's read this verse, Hosea chapter ten and verse twelve. Okay. Hosea chapter ten and verse twelve. I think the same thing is in Jeremiah also. Jeremiah four and verse three. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's read from um, Hosea ten verse twelve. Okay. So it says, uh, "Sow for yourself righteousness, reap in mercy. Okay. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He comes and rains righteousness on you." Okay. Let's just read that again. Sow for yourself. Sorry, you um, sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till He comes and rains righteousness on you. Okay, so um, yeah, so here um, the exhortation is to sow, to reap, and obviously the the whole picture is that of farming, agriculture. Um, but there's an instruction there. There's a command there. It says, "Break up your fallow ground." Okay, so what is fallow ground? Okay, any idea? Fallow ground. Okay, dry, dry ground. Sorry, parched ground. Okay, okay. So fallow ground is land that is um, that could be productive. You know, that has potential, but for some reason it is not. Uh, it has not been used. Okay, so it could be you know you can use it for agriculture. You can uh, you know for some reason it's just lying like that. And sometimes people do that. You know, people just so that it retains its uh, whatever richness and so on, and then they plow it again. So so here, um, you know, th this verse talks about sowing, reaping, sowing righteousness, reaping, and it says break up your fallow ground. Right. So the thing is, um, so whatever, yeah, yeah, of course, it's talking about the condition of our lives, condition of our heart and saying, you know, just break it up. You know, whatever is, um, uh, in other words, saying prepare yourselves, but break up, meaning, you know, that that land, if you need to sow it, you need to break it up. You know, it needs to be, in other words, it needs to be plowed. Right? It needs to be whatever is hard and everything needs to be plowed. It needs to be soft and pliable in order for the seed to be sown right so here uh, the prophet is saying break up your fallow ground so the question is you know what is my fallow ground what is it that that is in my life um, you know that could be productive that has the potential you know if you look at the fallow ground it has so much potential on the inside but it's not been used right it's it's just lying waste so um, the exhortation, encouragement is, you know, break it up, break up your fallow ground. What is it that's that's not uh, that's lying waste? What is it that's not allowing the the word of God to work, right? So that it can produce. What is it that's that is hardened, maybe that is hardened, unused? Um, so it can happen to um, to the best of us. You know, maybe um, it it was, you know, certain areas where we where we were strong, where we were productive, what we used to do. And I'm talking about, you know, uh, when it comes to our walk of faith, where we, where we used to, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe in terms of prayer, in terms of worship, in terms of studying the word of God, in terms of witnessing, whatever. And maybe there is, it's one area of our lives, right, that is, that is not yielded, that is hard. You know, that's, we look at it and then say, okay, Someday I should, you know, one day I should, you know, we, we look at it and say, um, yeah, maybe yeah, I was like that, but anyway, just, just move on. It just comes to us, right? Certain times, maybe we look at some old photos or maybe we look at some, you know, and then I realize, oh, certain things remind us. Okay, So here's another reminder, you know, break up your fallow ground. What is it? Right? So, um, it says, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes. Okay. For it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you. So, so it can be a it can be thriving again, it can be flourishing again, whatever it is that you know that we we might label as a fallow ground, but 
uh, for the thing is not to leave it like that, but to go back to seek the Lord till He comes and reigns righteousness. Right. So let's uh, let's just pray. Let's ask the Lord to show us. Um, but what is it that needs changing? What is it that needs plowing? What is it that needs preparation in my heart, in my life, so that uh, your word can be sown, so that you can rain righteousness on it, Lord, and the whole area, that whole aspect of my life can be flourishing and thriving again, right? Father God, we, we just come before you, and Holy Spirit, I pray that you would speak to us that uh, you would prompt and you would highlight, Lord, that thing, that aspect, that area of our lives um, that needs to be broken up, that needs to be prepared to receive your word, to receive the reign of righteousness so that things that are there might become productive again, Lord. We thank you, Father God, because you give us, Lord, yet another opportunity yet another chance to to do this we thank you for this exhortation and yeah we we, we come us we come and lord we, we yield ourselves lord surrender into your mighty hands even as we give you all praise and glory today in jesus name we pray amen amen okay hey welcome everyone who joined us a little late as well right um okay let me just uh, share the notes. So we're going to look at uh, one Im important aspect, which is uh, the ministry of the Word of God. Okay, so we're looking at the person. We, are, we were studying about how um, uh, you know how how one needs to. Um, I mean, what could be the qualifications, right? What could be the qualifications? What could be the uh, establishing the call of the person who's called to be the uh, spokesperson, who's called to communicate the gospel. So we, we looked at all that, different aspects of it, and we had some good discussions on it. So today we're just going to look at uh, the content, right? What is it that I'm called to communicate, that I'm called to share? Okay. So, um, so I just want to ask us, okay, so where in the Bible do we see this idea or the scripture? Um, no, do your best and leave the rest to God. Um, which verse is that we find in the Old Testament, New Testament? Um, any idea? Uh, the second one is um, God helps those who help themselves. Uh, help themselves. Online students also. Do your best and leave the rest to God. <laughs> okay, so Anand says these are all inspirational quotes said by pastors and Instagram influencers. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Mm. You do your part, God will do the rest. See, um, the thing is, um, okay, uh, it's not in scripture, says Nina, John. What about uh, time and tide wait for no man? <laughs> or uh, make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> see, these are uh, yeah, these are not in scripture. But see, some of these we can't say that we can't say the wisdom in these thoughts. I mean, wisdom in these sayings is totally unscriptural. Right? We ca we can't say that. But if we are going to preach as doctrine and say, you know, thus says the Lord, or you know, this as we find in the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's no, and we and we say certain things. You know, it's there somewhere, and then we, you know, we bring out these kind of uh, statements. Um, it can be damaging, right? It can be damaging. The idea is uh, idea that we uh, kind of teach, right, and establish in people's lives uh, can be uh, because the thing is this. You know, when uh, because of our because of the revelation or whatever the teaching is, there is conviction. Okay, now we know that the Holy Spirit will not testify to that, right? Testify. There won't be any deep witness conviction in people's hearts. But then, if people receive it and want to live by it, right? It uh, you won't say okay. It, it's not like it won't be productive, but it is not fruitful the way God wants their lives to be fruitful. 
right so there is wisdom in the principles and you know that we see there's good principles you can live a good life but uh, you know what is it that really uh, the holy spirit is highlighting what is it that god wants right so the con content of what we share uh, has to be the word of god okay. uh, i mean that's that's simple but when you when you look at these kind of examples uh, and when we listen to certain things that are being preached and you know taught then we realize hey the reference point if it's not really the word of god uh, then then what what is the point of it all right because the man and the message has to be you know word uh, or um, you know the message has to be word breathed or god breathed it has to be the inspiration of the holy spirit right so um, it can be nice things it can be nice stories it can be uh, you know sometimes it can be a wonderful heartwarming inspirational motivating story but it need not be related to any truth in scripture okay so we know that uh, the word of god has power okay so the word of god is powerful is alive is creative has authority right right from genesis we see that god spoke and things came into being so which means that the word of god is creative it's powerful brought things into existence which were not previously there in in existence right so that's how powerful god's word is so um so the we have the privilege of handling the word of god of being spokespersons or mouthpieces for the word of god okay so this is what uh, the lord says in jeremiah right uh, let's turn to the book of jeremiah chapter 1 um <clears throat> the lord tells jeremiah chapter 1 verse um, 4 onwards then the word of the lord came to me saying before i formed you in the womb i knew you before you were born i sanctify you i ordained you a prophet to the nation then said i ah lord god behold i cannot speak for i am a youth for the lord um, said to me but the lord said to me do not say i am a youth for you shall go to all to whom i send you and whatever i command you you shall speak do not be afraid of their faces for i am with you to deliver you says the lord then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said to me behold i have put my words in your mouth okay see i have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down to destroy and to throw down to build and to plant okay so the lord fills jeremiah with his words and he says before i have set you up and you will go where i send you you will speak the words that i command you and he, this is something supernatural he does he says you know behold why my words are in your mouth so he says to root out to pull down okay it's talking about kingdoms to destroy to throw down to build and to plant okay so the power the authority and the backing that comes when a person is commissioned by god when a person is commanded to speak the words of god or use the words of god okay so so also to each one of us because we are called to be spokespersons of god okay um let's look at um Okay, First Peter. Okay, just there. Okay, First Peter chapter four and verse eleven. Okay, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers let him do it as with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. So if anyone speaks if anyone ministers it is in the power of God if anyone speaks let him speak as the oracles of God oracles of God meaning you know one who is a vessel one who is like an instrument uh, in other words it's like um, a person who's you know 
who allows the word to be spoken through uh, one who's an oracle. Um, uh, actually, the typical meaning of an oracle is someone who actually, uh, yeah, you know, is like, a, uh, I would say, you know, in the, uh, let's say, when it comes to powers of darkness, someone who allows the, you know, the spirits to speak through. That's the oracle, right? Um, here, let him speak as the oracle of God, because the church is the dwelling place of God, of the Spirit of God, right? We are the temples of the Holy Spirit. So let him who speaks speak as the oracles of God. So when if we need to speak as the oracles of God, then we need to have the Word of God, okay? Have a rich deposit of the Word of God and speak as led by the Spirit of God, okay? And focus on the Word, right? So. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I just uh, use chapter and verse, chapter and verse, chapter and verse fully, you know, just quote scriptures verb at it? Not necessarily. Right? But whatever we speak has a reference point in scripture. It is based on this. Whatever we are sh sharing, uh, whatever we are teaching should be based on the word of God. Right. OK, so let's look at um, I just want to uh, share a little bit about um, uh, about the word of god and uh, from the public from our uh, book i'm sorry um oops where is that just one second from the publication um god's word the miracle seed right so let's look at that Just one second. Let me just share that screen. Sorry. Okay, there it is. God's word, the miracle seed. Okay, so the Lord teaches about His word, about His word bearing fruit, about His word being um, like the seed which is sown. Okay. And he shares that uh, very clearly in the parable of the sower. Right? And the parable of the sower we see in Mark chapter 4, we see in Luke chapter 8, and also in, um, what happened? So, and also we see in um, Matthew chapter 13. Okay, so let's look at Mark chapter 4. Um, maybe we'll just uh, read through those scriptures. Okay. Um, yeah, Mark, Mark chapter 4. And again, he began to teach by the sea, and a great multitude was gathered to him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it uh, on the sea, and the whole multitude was on the land facing the sea. Then he taught them many things by parables and said to them in his teaching, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said to them, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable, and he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the sword, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And when they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. And now these are the ones sown among thorns. These are the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Okay? So the parable of the 
uh, so uh, very clearly explaining what the word of god does okay the power of god's word the responsibility of the sower and the responsibility of the person who is receiving the word as well okay so god's word is like seed and it says that uh, our heart is the ground where the word is sown and it must be nurtured it must be protected you know if you if you look at it satan comes to steal the word okay so the, satan knows the value of god's word okay so it is stolen when i don't understand it or when i don't put in any effort to to really understand it okay if i if i just if i'm casual about it if i don't engage with the word of god you know if i don't make any attempt to receive it then it is it is stolen okay so satan comes um steals the word matthew chapter 13 actually talks about that right about understanding when we don't understand it the word is stolen away so one thing that we see here is that the word of god is so precious is so much of value that satan comes to steal it okay so satan knows the value of god's word sown in a believer's heart right that it will produce that it will produce faith that it will give authority right and it will it will bear fruit it will be bearing fruit the person's life will be productive and therefore you know it it is against all that satan and the kingdom of darkness stands for it will be a dismantling of lies right it will be a opening of prison right whatever the person is maybe you know in kind of a self made prison or in some kind of deception the word of god will just unlock that like this sunday i was having a conversation with a person and uh, you know this person was saying that um, right right from uh, after becoming a believer soon after that um you know she had a she had this dream nightmare and in the nightmare somebody was chasing her to somebody whom she knew who had died was chasing her to kill her okay so she said from that time whenever she was alone whenever she would sleep alone always this kind of nightmare will come where somebody is chasing to kill her and she would you know she she didn't she realized that okay i knew the name of jesus but then you know it was like using it like um, you know without any authority so she would say uh, in jesus name and that you know that character which was chasing her will say you know jesus i also know jesus okay and then ultimately you know so she she, she was tormented by this nightmare every time she was alone she would sleep alone so she would go to great lengths to make sure that she would you know that she was not alone um when she was sleeping now this is this is after you know getting married and so on and then so you know husband would travel on work she would make sure that okay somebody is there some relative is there etc so then she she was saying that you know she was growing in authority she was reading the word she was renewing her mind with the word of god and um, and then suddenly she realized that uh, on a recent travel the husband had gone and and then um, you know from the place where he was he called and asked hey, how are you managing and then she said, she realized that she was actually actually set free and she was not tormented anymore so she she said there's so much authority in the word of god and uh, and how we grow in authority when we renew our mind with the word of god so it just that the deliverance came as a result of renewing the mind with the word of god it was not it was a what you would say a encounter with truth right it was uh, she was delivered you know and uh, even in like i've heard this statement that discipleship leads to deliverance you know when you're a disciple progressively you are being delivered it, it always need not be a power encounter it can be a truth encounter right um, it is a truth encounter anyway so it's so god's word so satan knows that if this god's word can be stolen if the revelation can be stolen you know if if it is not nurtured in our hearts and in some way if it is compromised short circuited then it will not be productive this person's life will not carry authority will not be fruitful so therefore satan comes okay so the question is do i understand the value of god's word okay then we also see that um 
well there are there's persecution that comes because of it, you know the scripture says for the sake of the word okay persecution comes for the sake of the word which means that uh, it resists the word of god in order to make sure that the we don't hold on to the word of god right persecution so we so when you can understand okay where is it coming from okay who's the source of that persecution okay if it is to take the word out of my life so that my life will be unfruitful where is it coming from right then uh, talks about three things right or, or four things cares of the world deceitfulness of riches and lust for other things um talks about worry which means cares worry where our mind is so preoccupied and it says cares of this world okay so it, when does when do you know things that we let's say legitimate needs when do they become worry the lord jesus in in matthew chapter 6 right so he says uh, don't worry about these things okay for the father knows that you have need of this and he talks about certain things that that are basic that are necessary right food clothing right these are basic things these are the necessary things so he says this for your father knows that you have need of these things so don't worry about it okay so the same word here care okay. so when do these legitimate things become care when we are preoccupied with it you know when we are not really maybe when we are not really working towards it planning towards it but we are unnecessarily just thinking over and over about it right and it's it's not helping okay so that actually has the capacity to choke the word of god right so that is something that we see it's like a thorn it chokes it makes the word of god unproductive so that's why the lord says you know uh, do not worry do not worry because you cannot change by worrying um right so deceitfulness of riches deceitfulness of riches you know riches actually give us some sort of confidence some sort of assurance right but um, like we see in financial stewardship what we have learned right it's a very thin line right so the bible says talks about don't put your trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy right so the deceitfulness of riches if we are somehow deceived saying this is my foundation this is my refuge this is my the backing that i need then that's that's the deceitfulness of riches so that has the capacity to again choke god's word that my heart is not sensitive my heart is not tender towards god and it talks about other things like lust for other things pleasures of life and so on so um so the thing is that god's word has the capacity to produce god god's word needs to be sown needs to be nurtured uh and in order to produce and it is like the seed you say okay, when you look at the seed it has so much potential okay but and the thing is it has the power which is within which is resident within and um it it produces okay so first peter chapter 1 verse 23 talks again about the word of god about it being the seed and it says that we are born again by the word of god okay first peter 1:23 having been born again not of corruptible seed but incorruptible through the word of god which lives and abides forever okay the incorruptible seed we are born again by the incorruptible seed the word of god um so uh, uh, you know something supernatural something eternal that we receive and experience by the incorruptible seed which is the word of god you know we received it we received the word of god we received that truth um and the truth was this that jesus died for us on the cross and he died died for our sins he rose again for our justification and we believe in our heart we confess with our mouth and that incorruptible seed caused us to be born again right so word of god produces has the power and so on so you know all this we are seeing we are studying so that we understand the value of god's word 
so that we don't move away from the centrality of preaching the word of God. Okay, so we might think, okay, this, this seems very, very unimpressive. Okay, so why should I share this? It seems to be very, very simple. Some, you know, at times, right? It's it seems very basic, but we know that it is the power of God. Right? This is the power of God for salvation. So, so never underestimate, you know, the truth of God's word, the power of God's word. You know, First Thessalonians chapter two, verse thirteen. Okay, says. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as word of not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Okay. Two and verse thirteen. Okay. First Thessalonians two verse thirteen. So which effectively works in you so he's talking about these you know these believers they uh, in the Thessalonican church that so they received the word of god they received it from them as they've ministered and he says you know you received it as the word of god and not as something that we were sharing we men were sharing but you know you received it it, it is the truth it is the word of god and he also says that this effectively works in you who believe okay and the word used there in a in a, in a geo in the in the Greek, which means there is supernatural power, there is divine energy that is released, effectively works in you who believe. Okay, so God's word uh, supernaturally works uh, in us even as we believe. So, um, yeah, so one more verse James chapter 1, verse 21. Okay, James 1, verse 21. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Receive with meekness the implanted word. So when somebody receives with meekness the implanted word or the word that is sown, okay, the word that is sown in their hearts. Another translation says engrafted word. right? So... What does it do? It is able to save our souls, right? So nothing else does that. It is the word of God which saves the soul. Okay. Um, in Proverbs, we see this exhortation, which is which is really nice. Right? Proverbs chapter four, verse twenty onwards. Okay. Proverbs chapter four, verse twenty. Uh, My son, give attention to my words. 22 23 right my son give attention to my words incline your ears your ear to my sayings okay do not let them depart from your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life now look at it you know it says give attention right? so to the word of god give attention um, it says, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes, which means, you know, keep it visible, keep it, go to it over and over again. Um, keep them in the midst of your heart. Okay. Um, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Okay. And uh, again, keep your heart with all diligence, right? So, uh, we have been asked to or exhorted to have a rich deposit of God's word. Okay, to always have a rich deposit of God's word. Where do we find that scripture? Yeah, so where do we see that? Huh? Colossians, right? Okay. Okay, so Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Then it says, whatever you do, word or deed, do all, right? But then let the word of God dwell in you richly. Okay, yeah. 
Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Right? Okay. So, um, let there always be a rich supply of God's word in our hearts. Okay, so which means that, um, you know, as people who have been called to communicate, that we, we ourselves, we ensure there is a rich deposit of God's word in our hearts. And we make sure that, you know, we communicate the same thing, right? The re same revelation, the same understanding, that people will also have a rich deposit of uh, God's word in their hearts, right? Um, okay. Okay, I'm not going to the rest of the things like meditation of God's word and and all those uh, other things, but but the fact is that God's word is like a seed. Okay, and um, okay, in this uh, um, in in this publication, you can just read through it again, um, and it talks about you know something practical that we can do. Okay, since it's like seed. Okay, so I need to take the word of God, make sure that it's sown in my heart. Okay, meditate on it. Um, confess it, right? Think deeply, confess, work, act on it. So, you know, so he suggests um, a, a, like a weekly plan. Okay, Monday, just meditate on things like prayer, generosity. Uh, on Monday, faith. Tuesday, divine health. Wednesday, family. Which means that, you know, these are seeds, right? You take and you intentionally sow them in your heart. Right, read it, read it, meditate upon it, and confess it, declare it. Right on Thursday about wisdom and understanding. Friday about success and prosperity. Saturday ministry and miracles and so on. So we see we see that um, as we uh, go through uh, scripture, we see there's so much. Right, we really scratch the surface of it, of what is God's word, and there's so much that we. You know, even as I was just reading through, I realized there's so much that we can actually do intentionally pursuing God, right? When we say, Lord, I, I, I'm pursuing you, I'm seeking you, this is part of it, right? So there's so much that we can do intentionally um, seeking God, making sure that his word is in our heart um, uh, at, at all times, right? Okay. So, um, yeah. So let's... Um, uh, let's read Isaiah 55. Okay, Isaiah 55. Okay. So God himself testifying and saying, this is what um, my word is. Okay, He's saying this is what my word is. So... Um, okay, Isaiah 55. Verse 10, okay. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Okay, so God actually testifying, saying this is... This is my word. This is the word that I send out. It will, it will go and accomplish the purpose for which I'm sending it. Now, how how does God send this word? Through pastors, <laughs> Rinchen. <laughs> Two years, Rinchen. <laughs> how can you say that? Uh -huh. Through Holy Spirit, through His Word. Yeah, I mean that's true. Pastor is also true, but <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So we we are messengers. See, one is God sovereignly does it. He speaks His word. It can be an audible voice. It can be a prophetic message. It can be it, God sovereignly does it. But the fact is that God does it through others as well. Just like how He did with Jeremiah. He does it, just like how he does with any prophet. He does it. So we are priests, prophets and priests. We are kings and priests unto God, right? So he gives us his word in order to speak it out, in order to communicate it to others. Right? So 
the word of god comes to us god chooses to speak release his word and this is what it says that you know my word will he's saying my word will produce now is it conditional or unconditional see god speaking his word he speaks it sovereignly okay right certain things we know are like you said unconditional in the sense god has set this time and seasons and so on his second coming and all whether we believe in it whether the world is going to receive it it's going to happen right but we know for the word to produce in our heart for our lives to be fruitful for the prophetic word to you know uh, maybe there's something personal uh, in our, in our lives that he's directing that we need to receive and we the parable that we read just now mark chapter 4 that we need to nurture we need to receive uh, and then it it becomes fruitful okay so it so it, when we look at isaiah 55 and we can say you know god's word will yeah it will just happen right yeah but we need to be we need to be believers right the one thessalonians 2 and verse 13 that verse that we said read just now it says that that effectively works in you who believe right so us receiving god's word us having us having faith in what he says um is so very important for the seed of god's word to produce in our lives okay so um so the fact is that god's word is powerful god's word is life changing right god's word renews our mind god's word breaks chains okay so therefore you know i'm reiterating over and again let's not move away from the centrality of god's word now let's base what we are saying on the word of god and not because it sounds great or not because we heard from someone and it's you know it, it sounds good right we base it on god's word okay the second thing that we need to see is that god has chosen human beings or you and i to be the communicators of these communicators of his power of his word okay now that's his plan we see that right through scripture again first thessalonians 2 and verse 13 god actually releases his word through his people to minister his word first peter 4 the same exhortation let him who speaks who is it for all believers right so next time you think about sharing at uh, you know a morning devotion you think about it oh, it's, it's not like oh it's just a devotion how many minutes 15 minutes 10 minutes okay maybe uh yeah i'll i just you know pick up something i'll just share something you know, just think about it you know it's actually god's word right so god's word has power to change lives it can be something simple but it changes i'm sure you've heard that uh, i don't know if i shared it with you but this person who was called um, who was actually a new age guru right who was actually into deep into transcendental meditation astral projection and all those things right he was actually um, his name is tal brook and uh, in the west like he came to india to learn to all this spent time with you know um with a lot of these people sai baba and all these others uh, and then he he was a much sought after teacher of meditation and 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 yoga and all those things but one day when he was going in his car somewhere in the us he for some reason he switched on a christian uh, radio channel on his ray uh, on his car in his car and he heard you know the the simple gospel you know it was not like something that was explaining you know uh, about yoga or about i think it is just the simple gospel how god loves uh, god loves everyone john 316 and how he came to give us eternal life and uh, and the power of the cross and so on he just heard that he received that and it's it made sense for him he had actually experienced the power of the other side right so he, he had experienced he had wielded he had taught you know all that that comes with the yoga and you know, the kundalini yoga and all those things astral projection which means that you know being here and then you know moving in the spirit and all those things he had experienced that but yet the simple truth of god's word was so impactful that it completely changed his life 
at that moment and hear the gospel, it was so fresh from all, everything. That was the first time he was hearing it. And it was so fresh and so deeply convicting from anything that he has heard. And uh, so, so, you know, even it could be a morning devotion, it could be something, but you understand the power of God's word, right? Uh, as long as you're speaking the truth of God's word, know that there will be impact when it's received, when it's believed on. Okay. Um, the word of God brings faith, brings growth and maturity in the life of the believer. Okay. So, um, so understand that uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Okay, Romans 10, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So faith is something spiritual. Faith is something that comes through the word of God. So word of God, God produces faith in us. Okay, so the word of God produces something which is supernatural, which is faith in him. Right? So faith in God does not come any other way. Right? If you want somebody to walk in faith, somebody to grow in faith, which means that we need to share or communicate the word of God. Okay. Right. So the word of God equips the believer. The word of God informs the believer, brings the believer from ignorance to light. Right. So Paul writes many times, right? Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. And then he teaches right? about gifts. He says that I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be ignorant. It's like I, don't, I think four times he says. I do not want you to be ignorant in, in all the epistles, right? So um, in Thessalonians also, he says in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 12 also, right? So word of God teaches us, word of God brings us from, um, from being uh, in darkness into light. Word of God transforms us because when we take the word and we renew, word of God transforms us, okay? So when we preach, we preach the word of God. Okay, uncompromisingly, uh, making sure, making understanding that this is what happens when we carry the, when we communicate the, the word, right? Okay, any questions or anything that you might want to add? No questions? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Pastor, like I heard one preacher say uh, that um, about this verse, uh, where the uh, we should let the word dwell in us richly. Mm. So for that verse, uh, like he was saying um, that uh, the meaning of the verse is like uh, you have to like read. Uh, like you cannot just read like one verse each day. He is saying that he is saying like you have to read like the whole scripture, read as much as you can, and all that. But then uh, also like hearing from Pastor Ashish, like sometimes like God just right. speaks to him like to just right. one verse. Yeah, and yeah, that's what he meditates on it. Right. So both have uh, their place. So when it comes to meditating on God's word, um, like uh, deeply uh, meditating in the word of God, so. You know, just focusing on that one thing, and I think in this book also he writes about how he stayed with, the, you know, uh, John one verse one. In the beginning was the word, or you know, some some scripture like that for about, I think four days or five days, just just that one verse meditating on. So that has its place, but to study uh, the context, to study the background, that has its place as well. So we understand the whole thing. So both have their place, but when it comes to meditating. Typically, when we say meditating on God's word, uh, to go deeply, you know, and uh, receive from God's word the revelation, yes, this this is what it is, you know, to go over and over and over again. Maybe it's one verse, maybe it's two verses, and you draw as much as possible. The Holy Spirit teaches us. So both have their place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one more question. Is it possible for us to unlearn half-truths uh, injustice within us in our subconscious mind even as a child how can we be overcomers according to God's word 
even when other thoughts keep surfacing in our minds yeah so definitely so, you know there are several things that uh, that we pick up you know as uh, as human beings you know as we grow um and we don't even realize it right we and also we learn from our immediate family our parents we we learn certain things you know um for example i just tell one one, one thing is like maybe um you know in the house if the if people were always talking down to women okay talking down on women so respecting not respecting let's say the father always you know made fun of the mother and said oh you don't know anything so the the sons also learn the same thing was it taught to them right uh, hey, you need this is how you need to do it you need to no but they just learned okay so um, like jackin's question yeah it, it, all these mixed ideas you know uh, how do we unlearn it we unlearn it when we receive the word of god we unlearn it when we so the power of god works in us we unlearn it as we intentionally renew our minds with the word of god right so yes it is possible and uh, and that's what transformation is about right yeah so yeah the thought thoughts would keep surfacing and uh, that is what uh, renewal as romans 12 talks about where we where we discard those thoughts because they are not in line with god's word which is the truth and we take on the truth of god's word so we let go and we take on and then there's renewal right okay okay so we'll stop here and uh, thank you so much god bless we'll meet again um, yeah